in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They force Aaron. They force Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives. And of your sons and of your daughters. And bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women remove your earrings. Yes, we need to carve out very fast never find yourself trying to help god in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help god uza tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land. So after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, Oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there. Me, my heart, it's me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a habal. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a habal. But he used to help people. He said, really? Two years ago, when they told you, he said, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out. And you say, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you're talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, Let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people. And I am amazed at how much people fall. When it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I'll give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship, you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? guy will say sweetheart you say me i said yes to you guys say you said yes now what is all this again and ladies please be one i don't know why as i'm talking i'm coming into all this relationship thing. maybe god is speaking to some people through it hallelujah ladies don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. 
Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before, but Abba, the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian. You will not sleep with me. I can't. You are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary, especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that and they say, Sir, I have been I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been working according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in. Your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three impatience sets in i'm giving you to it i'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting the tendencies the vulnerabilities number four which is the most dangerous part is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which god has given you options options Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me more than this? How many of us have given God options? God told you, You are going to be a great man of God. But he said, be patient. You were not patient. Now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you. Only you and your best friend who is tired. He wants to leave. It's just that he doesn't know what to do with you. Only two of you. Every evening, only two of The person is tired. Because although you are genuinely called, but you cannot wait for timings and seasons. Hallelujah. I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago. 
appointed him and they said he was supposed to be a chief usher. It was such an embarrassment to his personality. And he said God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. If God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, Will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, Thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a kick, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my kick comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth. Because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you. I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when... A few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And 
I will prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people will not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium one to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have it. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You are already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The, the journey is still far. In Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I'll never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion, that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted they would have list of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I'll go to pray. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming. In the name of Jesus, in two months, I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust. And line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That let's listen. If you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long? Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. 
you told me a day will come i will minister before thousands i will be an international evangelist you are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry but as it is i have not yet seen it number one i'm giving you the formula brothers and sisters if you keep this secret you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 Unton there tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy it. my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i may not look like it now but my god there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there. I will stay through. I may not be able to preach now. I may not have money in my pocket now. But there is a due season. It has been written by prophecy. Not the witches in my village can stop it. No power in existence. And I choose to wait. I choose to wait. There is a due season when I will drive the cars. There is a due season when men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage. There is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh yes, time and chance happen to them all. My turn is coming. I know this for sure. A day will come. I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire. A day will come. That wedding ring will enter my hand too. But meanwhile I wait. A day will come. I will travel abroad. As though I'm walking from my house and going outside. I will enter the plane. A day will come. I will wear the convocation gown. A day will come. I will finally pass the job. There is a due season. The child will come. Barrenness does not last forever. Prophesy in one minute. Shake away unbelief. Shake away impatience. A day will come. I will have peace with my husband. I know it's a demonic challenge. There are ancestral powers causing this family problem. But there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family. I know. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I may not see the wind. I may not see the cloud. It does not look like it will rain. But the hand of Jehovah, that hand that regulates times and seasons, my turn will come. I will be on television. My turn will come. The healing anointing will finally work. My time will come. When my prophecy will appear, it's called my season of appearing. It's called my season of appearing. Hallelujah. Recognize 
that everything under the sun works by timings. So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen, I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction and God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and God specifically said we should never, not in this season of ministry, begin to sell tapes and do all of that. I cannot tell you how many people have called to say, man of God, you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira. I said I appreciate your interest, but there is a season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So many people have spoken to me. Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them you are an evangelist. They said I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. But adventure it was my flesh that ministered to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely they produce five albums not even their immediate environment no they they traveled abroad took the albums it didn't sell because the season see i taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that god is with you hallelujah recognize that there is a due season Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. It's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy 
is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that He has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah i have spoken to so many hiv patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy i remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said i now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says yes Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred. There is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria 
one heavy echo like and prophecy may God be with you and he came and stopped at North Gate not having one naira yet they are in 300 level when you see people worshipping koinonia everyone knows the story we can wear suits and fake it but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting so don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering. What will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me See your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor? Remember when we used to sit on the floor? Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate. 
and you are still complaining how many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years that God is able God who sustained my mother without salary she trained me to school where is that God where is the God that delivered you when the doctors concluded about you when that breast lump grew up when, 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 that, when your hair was your hair was falling where is that God that helped you some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God your grace your grace I'm nothing without you grace your grace shines on me Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season? Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise. And see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wyak result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy. In the God of what? 
the God that will bring that salvation, I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work, some of you as you go back right now to your homes, the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life, I've told you, when I would buy bread and cut the bread and put granite uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than a restaurant greater than whatever can you sing the song he's playing now Sam what does the song say let's even understand the meaning of the song so that we know we are singing Igbo people what does he say Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Psalms 138, very quickly. Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell. And let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. And that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods. All the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options. And I will dance before God. And say, it's better for me to remain barren. Than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least 5 or 10 minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. 
Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit, seen it in the dream, that a day will come, he will stand. The sun representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and 11 stars will bow to him. But then, his life was opposite what his destiny was saying. They threw him in the well, and he composed himself. He said, I'm a leader. I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat, they can lie against you, they can scandalize you. That's taking your coat, but it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. It cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, it would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, but my colleagues have 1 million. Say, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was stripped. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband. 
because he walked like royalty. Other slaves were moving his over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You are diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through title. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said no problem. The truth will come out because you can see look at me you become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics are you getting me you become too cheap you make yourself too cheap there are many of us who learn this now learn this now it is easier to become great than to remain great look at me come my sister Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV 2014 limited edition and she comes with it do you know at once all of a sudden you will find fault with her hair you will find fault with what she's wearing is it this place they put watch or here you know why listen people's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness it is a natural thing you must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. 
you were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, and Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. You are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, if dropping the money of the institution, it's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the koinonia guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. All the bruises inflicted by this is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduced problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. 
I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3. Hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you one million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best students. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We are going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We are going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We are just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things. Please worship him, prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to I don't know how you are going to worship God and praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy and receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank God. Rise up on your feet, everyone.
Hallelujah. We'll pray some prayer points right now. I'd like you to start this prayer session with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a tree, even though it is cut off at the scent of water. Again. Prophesy, there's hope for my family, there's hope for my marriage, there's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope, there is hope, there is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Samson, your eyes may be blocked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. David, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say I will marry any man, I will take any job, okay, I will go to the harbor list, I will ask God for forgiveness later on, I will sleep with the boss, let me just get the work. i like you to shout no way, shout it no way. Listen, the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. I'd like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time, I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. 
The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unfailing, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. Like Samson, I will finish. I receive the finish of the Lord in the air. I receive the finish the Lord in the the Lord in the air. I receive the finish the 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 I will wait till my turn comes. I and happens to them. Wait, wait. They that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall come up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small, Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly, when the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy and say, Lord, I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way. Come and prophesy. Go potokata. I will become that prophet that you have told me. I will become that great man. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. Diana, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing after another. Prophesy. I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Uber that has started this work. The hand of the Uber that started this ministry. The hand of the Uber will complete it at the shout of praise. The shout of praise. The shout of praise. It is not by power. It is not by might. There is an ability of the Spirit. There is an ability of the Spirit. It is the finish of the Lord. Just one more prayer point. 
we are going to pray specifically for the finances of our lives and our loved ones are you ready to pray two prayer points on that are just at once cause the powers are you getting me I told you there are some delays that are not godly there are some waitings that are delays I like you to cause the powers and release increase how many people are ready to pray say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus I stand as an ambassador of the kingdom and I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that speaks against the prosperity of my life and my family. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. you are about to fall out in this season and compromise I cause that power now in the name of Jesus Christ every other voice you've been listening to that is not the voice of his majesty tonight we silence that voice in the name of Jesus every wrong relationship wrong association wrong business, wrong ties in the name of Jesus Christ that is giving Satan access to destroy you. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. I pray for you. Where your strength is almost failing, tonight, receive a supply of strength. A supply that will last you until you arrive. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. And I speak over everything in your life that is dead. That the devil has told you there is no hope. In the name that is above all names. I command those dry bones. Come alive now. Come alive now. That dying CGPA. Come alive now. 
that dying family come alive now that dying marriage come alive now for your expectations shall not be cut short in the name of the Lord Jesus celebrate Jesus remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I need to make my ways right with the Lord. I love him, but I've not made a commitment to walk with him. And there are yet others who are saying, I've given my life to Christ before, but for whatever reason I've found myself walking in ways that are not of God, and I need to retrace my step right now. We're out of time in just one minute. If you belong to any of these categories, I'd like you to leave your seats. Don't be ashamed and come out here right now. I want to pray for you. Go ahead. You're hearing the voice of the Lord. Don't remain on your seat inside and outside, wherever you are. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to people. When you hear his voice, do not sit back. Do not sit back. God bless you. God bless you. This is where it all starts. God bless you. Keep coming. We have just one minute for this. God bless you. Make sure you don't sit back. This is about your life. This is about your destiny. God bless you. Keep coming. Thank you so much, those of you who are here. This is the greatest decision you would ever make. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your right hand. Come and join them. God bless you. I know they are still coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I make up my mind to live for you from today and for the rest of my life. Join them, my brother. I denounce sin and Satan and I receive the gift of eternal life into my spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus that I'm a child of God. I'm saved. The life of God is in me. In the name of Jesus. I release every one of you from whatever has held you. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care where you have missed it. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, you are released. I curse that power that holds you down. And I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to experience the way, the very life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare you saved. I declare you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this glorious decision bless you. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your information and you'll be back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If this is your first time tonight worshiping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Please leave your seat and just run out here very quickly. If you brought anybody, now is the time to push them forward. You love them too much to allow them without this prophecy. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you very quickly. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Koinonia, celebrate them. You can do better than this. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you by His mighty hand. He brought you to change you. He brought you to transform your life. Please keep coming. Don't stop. Koinonia is a sacrifice of appreciation. Thanking the Lord for what He has done. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in our midst. Thank you so much for taking the time to come. We want to bless you and prophesy. We are anointed and when we speak over your life, it follows you. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and prophesy. Influence their destiny with the power of prophecy. We command in the name of Jesus Christ. That you are experiencing the hand of God. You are experiencing the grace of God. Every challenge you came here with. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We cause that power. We cause that power. We cause that power. In the name of Jesus. We release you to experience the life of God in its fullness. We bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit. We bless you with the grace of God. It is multiplied to you through knowledge. Every habit. Every challenge that followed you here. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.